do an example in relation to control. Okay, so I'm going to start off with giving us some information. The first one is the risk of incorrect acceptance going to be five percent. All right, we're going to expect four deviations. All right, and the tolerable deviation rate allowed, according to my ord manager, is going to be six percent. All right, so how do we start this? The first thing that we need to do is determine R. Okay, so to determine R, I need to know what's my desired level of assurance. All right, so the first part there, desired assurance. Okay. And based on the question where it says, well, incorrect acceptance, not 5%, I want to be 95% sure I'm correct. So it's my desired level of assurance. And then the next part I need to do is I know my expected deviation for. So if I use the table that I'm about to show you on screen and I look at 95% with four errors, that gives me an R figure of 9.16. Okay, so that's the first step which is determining R. The second step is the sample calculation. Okay, so N equals R divided by TDR. I know my R is 9.16. My TDR is 6%. Okay, so let's my calculator out. 9.16 divided by 6% gives me a sample of 153 transactions. I rounded up there to the nearest whole transaction. Based on a situation where I want to be 95% sure, I'm expecting four deviations, and my tolerable deviation rate is 6%. example, but this time we're going to use substandard testing, but I'm going to use some of the same information. So the thing that I'm going to use that's the same is the risk of incorrect acceptance, right, 5%. So that means I want to be 95% sure. But because of substandard testing, I'm not interested in deviation. Instead, I'm using two extra pieces of information. I'm being told that the tolerable the statement is 50,000. Okay, so that is, I'm willing to allow $50,000 worth of error within that particular account, and that the book value of my sample is 1 million. Okay, so how do we determine R? In this instance, we still have a desired assurance of 95%. But instead, I'm going to use table 11.5, which you're about to see flash up on your screen. And when you look at an incorrect acceptance of 5%, that gives you a reliability factor of 3. Alright, so now let's do our sample calculation. N equals R multiplied by, what's our formula? BB divided by tolerable misstatement. So R is 3, book value is a million, divided by 50,000. So let's do that on my calculator. Turn my calculator on. Okay. Oops. I want to put R is 3 there. 3 times 1 million divided by 50,000 is 50. So that's my sample size example there for using um, the formula but with a substantive test. Now what happens 
if instead of being able to calculate R, instead you have the tolerable deviation rate and the expected deviation or misstatement amount. So if you have instead of this information, you get given either, we should be given two things, the tolerable deviation or misstatement rate as a percent, and you're given the expected deviation or misstatement as a percent, then you're going to use a number of other tables. And those two tables are actually based on statistical calculations, which allow you to use a matrix to match up your expected deviation or percentage misstatement amount and the tolerable deviation misstatement rate, match two items together to be able to give you your actual sample sizes. Now, each of those tables, and I'm going to show you, this is the 90% table here that you can see. That 90% table is based on a desired assurance of 90%. Right? You can also get tables for 95%, for 99%, for 80%. All right? So if you have those two figures as percentages, then use one of these tables. Um, you can, most audit firms will have those in their manual. I know the Australian Accounting uh, Research Foundation produces one. They're often in a lot of textbooks. Uh, for my students studying at UTS, if you ever need to use that table, that table would be actually provided to you.